Uh, how's everybody doing? I'm the lead for the um, air conditioning experiment. Um, we're group one, which is experiment four. So a little bit of background on it. This lab's gonna uh, tell us about how a little bit about how air conditioning works, and it's gonna focus on a variable air volume air conditioner and how it works. So if you think of a building, any building nowadays, we think of like new PFT and everything. They all have variable air um, conditioners, and this is because what this uh, air conditioner allows us to do is it allows us to be able to cool one room at a different rate than another room. You know, some rooms with windows, they might heat up quicker versus a room where there's just one door, like in this one, it might stay cooler longer. Um, these variable air volume um, air conditioners, um, they use little actuators to adjust the amount of airflow going through to be able to cool or heat up a room as needed. So the objective of this experiment is to, uh, we're going to determine the efficiency of our air handling unit, the air, air um, conditioning system that's in the lab. Um, we're also going to label the physical components and we'll be changing the variables in the air conditioning equations and a little bit of safety. You got to wear safety glasses, pants, closed toe shoes, everybody knows this. Um, also, do not touch any of the machinery while it's running, something may be hot and you possibly burn yourself and also follow all procedures so that no fires are started. We don't want to burn down PFT because it's brand new. Um, so a little bit of theory. Um, up here you see a little chart. So T entering, that's the temperature of the entering air. It's going to pass over cooling coils. Now these cooling coils are going to suck out the heat from that air as it's passing over, cooling it down. And then after it's cooled down, it'll be the um, LVG or leaving, it's the temperature, and it'll be leaving the air. And then there's a little fan that's going to blow it into the room, and this little fan will add a little bit of heat, but not enough for us to um, worry about in this um, experiment. Um, so right here, uh, this is the uh, coil bypass, uh, what do you call it, frequency or factor, I forget. But um, it should be between zero and one. The closer it is to zero, the more efficient these coils are at cooling the air. So we're going to have to find that. Also, the electrical energy rate, um, which happens to be 8.26 for the unit we're using, that um, gives us an idea of the rate. And also, with that, we can determine the coefficient of performance, which, as many guys said, you use to judge other. Um, air conditioners or units. So um, a little bit of theory, what we're going to be finding in this experiment is the air dry bulb temperature, which is just dry bulb means any, is just the temperature without moisture or humidity. And then um, the relative humidity, we'll find that. We're going to find the leaving temperature and the um, relative leaving temperature. So this chart over here, the psychometric chart, and it basically plots all of this, um, your dew point, your relative humidity, and when the relative humidity is equal to 100%, all of your wet bulb, your dry bulb, and your dew point are equal to each other. Cool fact. So this is um, the cooling loop of our apparatus. Now, this is just the cooling side, so you can see we'll have the AC unit. All y'all have been in the lab, so you know. And then the AC unit will pump. It'll pass over the coils. Then you'll get um, cool air. You'll get cool air flowing up through there. And there's a little heater fan, which, as Top asked earlier, will um, heat it up because this is, we're going to run this at um, full blast where it cools it down and then this will heat it up to get it to the temperature we want to and then these VAV boxes are both go to different, uh, well you could say different rooms like a PFT would be to different rooms and they will adjust the temperature and adjust accordingly to a specific temperature. So this is the heating loop, um, it passes through, um, it'll the heating, the air um, keeps cycling through and it's heated up through the plenum and on, I think it's on both sides of the plenum are different uh, boxes that will um, heat up or cool down as necessary as you see right here, the chamber A and chamber B. So um, these two chambers will be cooled and they are both different. So with these two chambers we're going to be using the thermal resistance. Now any um, heat transfer, if you've taken heat transfer, no heat transfer, um, the heat transfer through a wall or through an object can be mapped out as a electrical circuit. It makes it easier for calculations and just will, it'll make life easier overall. And so with these two chambers, both of them are different. So with chamber A, we're going to be focusing on the outside surface. 
it goes outside surface, there's sheet metal, and then there's internal cone surface. So it's all mainly conduction, but then there is convection of the air moving across it. <coughs> and then with chamber B, it's a little different because you have your outside surface and you have your sheet metal. You also have an air gap, which, and then another sheet metal. So the difference is the air gap, and this air gap will give you, it is an insulator when it's um, still and it isn't moving, it isn't convection, it's actually conduction. And you see this in windows, double sealed windows, and this helps to insulate and to make it more efficient. So um, the procedure is mapped out in the lab manual and it's basically, first off it says don't touch any ductwork work because you can burn yourself or start a fire. And then you're basically going to turn on your unit and then all the other procedures is just a bunch of steps on how to acquire your data and how to acquire your temperatures. And then at the end you have to be careful with how you turn off the fans and how you turn off all the equipment so that you don't burn up any fans or any heaters. And just a few little calculations um, that we're going to be determining. We'll be determining the um, heat rate and we'll be using our temperature difference, the area, and then the thermal resistivities right here. And also this 1.08 is what you'll be using to um, calculate your heat transfer rate as well. And so this is just a little diagram of what it would be like in a building. Let's say this side cools quickly and this side's like hotter, so then you'll need that variable air unit to um, be able to cool or heat as necessary. And that's it. There are points for what to expect the results to be. And you have to touch upon that. How much should be our COP be? How much should be? Your oh, your COP should be, what was the number? 2.5. Should be on this slide. Oh, yeah, like 2.52.